Hello and welcome to the Doctoral College blog series in conversation with WLV Doctoral College. I'm Deborah Curiton, I'm the Research Development Manager at the University of Wolverhampton and... I'm Dr Ben Halligan, I'm Director of the Doctoral College. Okay, so today we're going to talk about conference presentations and how to prepare for um, attending a conference. So Ben, um, we've thought we might talk about how we prepare pragmatically and how we prepare emotionally. So what would your tips be? I think the, f the first thing would be to find out when you're speaking, uh, who are you with, what's the panel that you're a part of, where are they speaking, what time is it in the day, are you the first person, are you the last person? So to kind of get a sense of where they're placing you. Um, also to locate the room as well, if it's in a location you don't know, to find out where you need to be and to be there before time. So that's got a pragmatic um, implication, but also an emotional implication. So if you're prepared, <clears throat> if you're, if you know what the room looks like, you know what the people look like, or maybe sound like that you're going to be presenting with, you're not. It's not going to come as a bit a, mm. a shock to to the system when somebody stands up and speaks. Um, differently to you to what you've anticipated you know the type of language that they're going to use if you look at people's presentations that may be on on YouTube beforehand their style the way that they they approach the presentation and it means that you you can prepare yourself accordingly so mm, yeah. you you kind of get a sense of who they are and what your style might be and how that style fits into into the um, the set of presentations that you're that you're within, or how you stand out from those, if that's the way that you want to be. Mm -hmm. So you're finding out who you're with, but I think yeah. that checking the room out is also very important in terms of checking the equipment. Does it work? You know, will the pen drive fit into the computer? Do you need blinds yeah. down if you're going to shoot where the light switches? You know, things like that. Yeah. Practical matters. Because I mean, how many conferences have you been to where <laughs> there's been a huge gap when there's some IT related problem? Oh, yeah. It's, or how many times have you been sat on the floor trying to stick your pen drive into into the um, the USB slot at the back of a computer that mm -hmm. I'm doing this business? It's, so, it's good as well, I think. At a conference, if you're speaking fairly early, mm -hmm. um, that gives you the rest of the conference to relax. Whereas I think if you're at the very end, then you're enjoying the conference, but you've got this slight tension that you're going to be up at some point. I mean, often, you know, you can ask the organisers, um, could you put me on a certain day at a certain time if that's possible? I mean, mm -hmm. that's quite normal. Yeah. And I think, um, going back to what you were saying about preparing, is to make, although um, a lot of conference organisers will ask you to send a copy of your presentation um, through, you know, a week before the, the conference, don't assume that that means that, the, that your presentation will be lined up on the computer. Always make sure that you've got a backup mm. Um, mm. in your hand, just in case. I 100% agree. And I would even email a copy to yourself. So that if your, your pen drive is broken or, you know, who knows what, you, you can always get it off. Next have it in more than one format. Exactly, yes, definitely. Um, one of the things that my PhD supervisor told me, and although that was many, many years ago, was always um, take with you copies of the, the presentation in, in, in handout format mm -hmm. as well. So if the worst comes to the very worst and the, the overhead projector won't work or the, the internet goes down, you can still give your presentation um, from from a set of handouts that you can you can share around the room, or it's there in case somebody says to me, "I really enjoyed your presentation. Could I have a copy of it?" You can say, "Here you are," mm -hmm. and give them a copy. Absolutely. And if it's based on an article or something you've had published, of course, to take copies of that article. Yeah. And if you have business cards, to make sure you've got those, because a few people may come up to you afterwards and they're interested and. It's a good time to make those connections and I think as well it's important if you're doing a PowerPoint to have a slide at the beginning maybe also at the end with your name your email address your affiliation who you are what you're doing PhD researcher in you know that kind of thing to really you know introduce yourself to to these people because you may be the 50th person they've seen and they may not know who, who you are 
So for some students, the university may give them business cards and other universities they, they don't. Do you recommend that students get their own business cards made up? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. What do you think? I'm, well, I'm gonna... um, I didn't have business cards. Um, and in those days, you didn't have the companies that will print 100 business cards for, for £5. Um, so I used to make sure that I, because in those days you had to typewriter, it wasn't even computers, I'm that old. Um, I used to make sure that I got my, my details typed up that I could then just give those to people. Um, but I would, I think I'd recommend that it, 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 ask your supervisors, ask mm. the university and if they say no, be prepared to, to have your own card made mm. up just so that you've got a card that you can share with people. I, I agree, yeah. I mean, that's a good idea. Also, I mean, on that identification slide, you could have your email address, but also maybe your Twitter handle or your blog URL, yeah. which is stuff we'll be talking about in another blog. Yeah. So ways that people can get hold of you. Because a year or two later, someone will say, oh, there was that paper at that conference and they talked about this. I'd like to invite that person to do a yeah. article for a journal I'm editing, who were they, I can't remember, you know what I mean? So those yeah. connections can be terribly important. Okay. So we've talked about preparation, um, so making sure that we know what the room is like. Mm -hmm. What else would you suggest? Timing your paper. Yeah. How important is that? Yeah. And I would say don't time it to the same, so if you're given 20 minutes, yeah. don't read it to your, your pet dog or whatever, and then <laughs> it comes in at 90 minutes and 58 seconds and go, right, that's fine. You'll always be slower. Um, make life a bit easier for yourself. If you're giving a 20 minute paper, time it to 15, 16 minutes and then that's it, because that gives you a bit more time for elaboration. Yeah. Um, if you wind up going over, that can be quite disorientating if you've got someone who's waving signs around saying one minute, or even worse, who will cut in and say, I need to stop you now. Yeah. Um, and will stop you mid-flow. So please don't let that happen. Time it, time it, time it. Give it a couple of run-throughs and then you know it's on the... I've been to conferences where um, they turn the lights off and turn the microphone off at uh, the 20 minute point. Mm. So you, you, what you don't want is to be mid-sentence when your microphone goes off and everything goes dark on you. Um, so yeah, make sure that your presentation um, comes under and, and you know, sometimes it's for parity, that yeah. everybody has to have the same amount of time, they're not doing favours. Sometimes it's because they need to get the panel over to get the next panel in, yeah. or it would have some knock-on effect, or people need to go for lunch, or, you know, so um, often there are very good reasons why they're like this. Yeah. And I think some of the things as researchers that we, we make common mistakes is that we try to present too much in a presentation. So that will often mean that we're trying to, to talk about the whole of the PhD mm. um, in a presentation mm. rather than one aspect of mm. it. And I think if, you, if you, you, you try and think about what's the most important aspect of your doctorate or your research um, that aligns with the conference theme and talk about that, um, it will help you kind of keep um, your, your presentation um, to, to, to time and be more concise and more precise. And, and to say that as well, so to say today I'd like to talk about one aspect of my research that speaks to one of the conference themes, which is this. Yeah. Uh, and this is one aspect of a wider area of research I'm looking at for my PhD, but I'm just going to be talking about that. And I think that general introduction yeah. is very important. And also, of course, a, a bit of a summary at the end yeah. can really be quite important. And I think if you lay out a menu and say, so firstly, I'll try to define this. Secondly, I'll look at an example that um, I've been exploring. And then thirdly, I'll make some observations about how this is related back to the, you know, that way you've taken people by the hand and you've shown them what's going to happen and they won't panic and they go, oh, okay, I understand where we're, where we're coming from. So we've talked about preparation, we've talked about timing, we've talked about sh a little bit about structure and I mm. think structure is really important. Um, we're going to talk in more depth about structure in another blog. However, are there any sort of tips that you might want to just give now um, around structure? I think um, to 
to try if you're doing a PowerPoint to try and align that to the structure. Yeah. So if, if you're doing it in three parts, yeah. um, to have you know three sections of the PowerPoint, maybe even different coloured backgrounds, maybe a title part one, introduction, definition, part two, case study, what what it is, part three, summary, yeah, observations. Um, to really try and uh, create a, a blend between these two things. When when you're at a conference and someone is there and they're reading verbatim a paper, you rapidly um, forget where they're coming from, why they're talking about this, what the relevance is. It's quite a tedious experience mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I think that, the, I mean, to me, a presentation is about articulating what the structure is as, as well. And you, and you should do it for undergraduates if you're lecturing. You should, you should yeah. also say, "I'm going today. I'm going to talk about this and the other." And then, you know, you shouldn't just sort of turn up and speak for one hour and vanish, and never <laughs> sure what the relevance was. But I think that's. Um, I think it's really important what you said. Um, you raised the the idea around some people will read verbatim, and it's discipline specific, isn't mm -hmm. it? So mm -hmm. it, it is a thing in in some discipline areas that you read a paper. In other discipline areas, it's more about talking uh, about your your presentation, and I think a lot of us rely on notes. I still do. Um, so when I turn up and I present um, at a conference, I'll have a copy of, of my slides with all sorts scribbled all over the slides, um, and it's not verbatim, but it's notes about well, I want to talk about this, and I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about something else. So I know that there might be two points on this slide that I want to talk about and then on the next slide there's one big point or whatever. Um, but for a long time I used to get really, I used to practice the presentations in my head and I knew exactly what I was going to say and then I used to get really upset because I knew what I wanted to say and sometimes I might miss out a sentence or I might miss, um, I might add something in that I wasn't going to say. And then I'd get quite upset about the fact that I hadn't given the presentation in the way I practiced mm. it. And it took me a long time to realise that actually that was okay because nobody in the audience knew I was going to say that line. So I haven't necessarily failed. So I think sometimes um, it's kind of not being tough on yourself mm. if, um, if, if you think um, the presentation hasn't gone as well as, mm. as, as you wanted it to. Um, what we tend to compare is our insights to somebody else's outside when, when we presented and we're looking at other people's presentations. We, you know, we know we were nervous. We know our hands were shaking. Um, we know that we don't like talking to big audiences or we know we do like talking to big audiences. You know, there's no right or wrong in this. People are just different. However, the audience often don't pick that up. They're listening to hear what you are saying. Mm. Um, so then they're, they're not going to be aware that, you know, your nervous tick is to keep doing this. They just, well, you know, they're, they're, they're listening to what you say. Um, so, you know, don't beat yourself up and don't compare, yeah. don't compare how you feel inside to what you think somebody else is, is projecting or what somebody else is projecting outside and what you think that means. Very true. And, you know, it takes two or three goes, doesn't it, with a paper? until you're really confident and feel yeah. that you're delivering it to the best of your abilities. I don't I don't know. There will be there will always be some people, um, particularly if you're quite introvert, that giving a presentation is going to be the hardest thing in the world to do. Mm. Um, and you have to wear a mask when you do it. Um, I'm you know, I I have said to, to students before now, I absolutely hate it, but I know I've got to do it because this is the job I want to do. So I have to literally act when I'm giving a, a presentation or when I'm teaching. So, you know, that's okay too. It's okay not to like doing it. Um, and it's okay to feel, feel the fear and do it anyway. So do you get scared of the prospect of questions at the end of your paper? Always. Mm. Um, and I don't think I answer questions very well either. Um, I, you know, I see pe some people who, who kind of feel the questions and, and um, and I really admire it. I'm, I'm, I literally go into sheer panic at the end of once I've finished that presentation about people putting their hand up and I'm sitting there saying, please, please be asking somebody else in the panel. And I said, Deborah, we'd like to ask you a question. I'm like, oh, no. Um, but, you know, you, you can always, if, it's, it, if it is a question that you don't think you can answer, 
you can always say, you know, that's really interesting, thank you. Thank you for raising that. I think mm. I need to think about that a little bit more. Mm. A very good way. Or um, ask them to answer their own question. Often people um, have an idea and they ask a question because they've got a response. Mm. Um, so you can invite that. So yeah, that's really interesting. What are your thoughts about that? You, you do get that a lot of conferences. People will say, I have a question for you, Deborah. Um, you've approached something this way. Yeah. Um, have you not thought about doing it that way? And then they will talk for five minutes, which is actually their thesis, their research, their ideas. Yeah. And they're not actually asking a question at all. They're just grabbing the floor to air their particular yeah. ideas. And yeah, you do get quite a bit of that. Yeah. But, you know, that's OK. And usually people are used to that. So they're, you know, they're, they're not judging you in any mm. way negatively as mm. a result of, of that. Um, so, yeah. So um what else is there anything else you'd like to say i tend to if i'm giving a paper conference i audio record it do you i tend to make that available somewhere should people want it if i feel it's gone okay if, if i've mangled it obviously <laughs> I'll, I'll delete it and never mention it again <laughs> so that that's really interesting because that kind of raises um uh, another area we are going to be talking about in another mm. blog which is about you know vlogging blogging micro microblogging, mm -hmm. podcasting, and, and the power of that. So, um, so, so that's, we may come back to that. Yeah, we might come back to that. Okay. So, um, we've talked about structure, we've talked about timing, we've talked about um, preparing yourself, checking the room out. We've talked about, you know, the fact that it's some, some people, it's not an easy thing to do, mm. and that's okay. Um, and there'll be other people in that room who who totally feel it for you too, and not to worry. Um, so, one top tip before we leave? I think that it's only ever going to get easier. Yeah. So the first one is going to be tough, and you'll yeah. be scared, and it, it, and it may not go well, you know? But that's okay, because with every one you do subsequently, it will get easier and easier. Yeah. And then you'll break through the pain threshold, and perhaps then you'll start looking forward to being able to engage in a conference and talk to people and things like that. So not, not to panic if it seems insurmountable because you will get to the summit eventually. And mine would be to look out for conferences that are specifically for doctoral mm. students. Mm. Um, because the people who are presenting there will be people in the same boat as you. Um, or, you know, um, look at the conferences that your university run and mm. see view those as a safe space to practice mm. your your skills your communication skills and to utilize them to to kind of um quit your teeth really on on conference presentations Absolutely. okay okay so thank you for listening um if there are any vlogs that you'd like us to do please put them in the um there's apparently below this video there's there's a chat menu so you can you can tell us the videos you'd like us to do we'd love to hear from you and also we'd like to say hello to our, our new subscribers we've got some more subscribers so if you do like us do subscribe and you'll get an update to to tell you um when we release a new video we try to release a new video each week um so Keep watching and um, let us know what you think. Okay, bye. Bye.